Hello there and welcome again to my workshop. Today we're going to finish this pin board off for the laser. And what I've discovered that I've neglected to do is put some vent holes in this back fence area. Um, and also in the side, not too, I'm not too bothered about in the side, but certainly in the back I probably should have put some vent holes in it. So I'm going to be doing that today. So we're going to, we're going to need to set it in the laser up on end like this. So I'm going to be doing that the simplest way that I can. And then lining it all up and uh, drawing it out in laser cut and then cutting these vent holes in this end. Um, the full set of drawings uh, for this is, uh, is on Patreon. So if you were interested in building one yourself and you want the drawings, go along to Patreon and you can download them from there. Um, I'll just bring you in a bit closer to the screen. Okay, so a lot has been happening this week. Um, of course, I've, I've launched Patreon and I have um, ordered all the parts to, all the main parts that is, to uh, convert a small lathe uh, into a CNC lathe, which is going to be called Katie. <laughs> I can see, hear you saying, oh, why Katie? Well, I, I named my machines everything. Now the CNC mill that I converted, that's Frank, as in Frankenstein. Um, and how I came about this name was, I, my wife came across this the other day in one of the shops and picked it up for me. And it's a wooden robotic hand. <laughs> and uh, which reminded me of um, Katie Perry's 365. So if you want to go and see her um, video on YouTube, it would translate very well into a robotic um, small lathe then. So um, that's going to be the name of, of the lathe, but um, coming back to the lathe, I, I actually ordered it yesterday and I made my final decision and um, I, was, I was rather happy actually about the decision I made. And the decision I made was obviously the SIG. The, the, you know, they're the world's best mini lathe. And um, I mean, I, I've got other SIG equipment here and I've never really had a problem. I stripped the gear in, I didn't strip a gear in one, but uh, someone who I let use my machine decided to overload it and <laughs> strip the nylon gears in it. And you, you know, I've made videos on that, of uh, making it belt drive and, and CNC conversion. Um, but that was no fault of the machine itself. That was, you know, sort of uh, being abused, <laughs> shall we say. Um, SIG is sold worldwide. And uh, it's sold under uh, different names too. I mean, this is sold uh, in um, all over America and especially out of um, uh, Grizzly and, um, is it Harbor Freight? Yes, Harbor Freight and uh, also the Little Machine Shop. Now they sell a lot of these, uh, but they, they sell them under the, the Grizzly name, um, which is fine, you know, um, but really it's a SIG. And uh, so, you know, hundreds of thousands of these are being sold and they've got a very good name. They're a very well-made unit. And um, I was toying with the idea of um, this one. Um, but I was, um, my mind was sort of made up for me really. Um, I was talking to them and telling them what I wanted to do and they said oh yes we'll sell you one. Oh yes no problem at all and then when it came to order well we don't actually have any 
Um, I said, well, what, what do you mean? You don't have any. Oh, well, they're on a boat. That's not really any good to me, is it? <laughs> Stick with what you know. If you've had machinery in the past uh, and they've been good and reliable and the customer service too, especially in Australia and New Zealand. Now this company, Aussie Tools, supplies Australia and New Zealand. Um, the guy you need to speak to here, if you were ordering anything really, lathe, milling machine, he does the works. He is the sole agent for SIG. Um, speak to Stephen, that's the guy's name, and um, he's very approachable and uh, you know, the name SIG speaks for itself. SIG, Grizzly, have a freight, whatever you want to call it, it's still SIG. So this is what I would recommend if you was uh, considering converted to CNC. Okay. Okay, so here we are in LaserCut. As all I'm simply going to do is draw a rectangle, doesn't really matter what position on the table it is, like that, right click, size, now it's 320 long, 320 by 32 and okay that zoom in and then all I'm going to do is get this and I'm going to draw roughly in the center of it use the arrow keys. I don't want to come too close because here I've got an end piece glued to that so I want to stay away from that. I just want it sort of roughly in the center there which is fine. Now I want to make uh, a copy of, of them all the way along here. So you just go here to make a copy. I'll go 18 I think. I think I'd be all right. 18 millimeter gap. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. We're going to leave that on a black layer. We'll do that first. I'm going to put this on a blue layer. So what we're going to do is say this layer, uh, 1350, um, 12. 12 millimeters a second. 50, 50, uh, 55, I think, 55, 55, and 50. I want these to be nice and clean, so I'd rather overpower it than underpower it. Okay, so now that is ready to put into the laser. So now let's set the job up. Okay, so I've driven the table now down, not all the way, uh, it'll still go a little further, but not, it won't go far enough for me to turn this up on in that way. So anyway, I've just got something in here to prop this on, stop it flopping over. Like that. That's fairly stable.
Okay, so now let's, I'll move the camera a little bit. Okay, so here we go. It's running that hot that it's actually just slightly welding them back in. It'll just run around now and do nothing. Okay, in fact, if you just... Um, I just push them out. Beautiful job. Okay, so let's do a test cut. So what I, what you do with this pin table, you put the paper in squarely into this corner and then I'll do the Z0 or the focus then and just put this on the top set the datum It's 9.5 millimeters actually, the, the focus of this laser. It's a, a two inch lens up in here. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fetch it right to this side, to the front, and um, I'll do a couple of them. I just wanna show you, I'll have a second camera set up here. Uh, and I'll video the tracking and uh, see how the airflow is actually because I'd like to see how the airflow is actually. Alright, we'll set that at our datum or origin and we'll do a test. That's going to be fine. Set the second camera up. power I think so we'll stop that position this now and set that as our new point of day term to a test. Okay, let's run this. That's better.
and that's carrying the fumes or whatever fumes there are there is carrying it away and it's sufficient airflow underneath now that it's not causing the paper to, to rise or move it works lovely The laser can be very, very delicate, but it's unbelievable the amount of power that's concentrated into such a small area. Of course, that would burn a hole straight through your finger if you put your finger underneath it. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, the first one overcooked it a bit, but if you notice this one, that's the underside. It's very, very clean cut. Very clean. Now, if I can pick this out without breaking it. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Very, very delicate. So I hope you've liked the video today uh, on the completion of this pin table. The plans for this pin table is on my Patreon page and it's at this stage I'd like to give a big thank you to my Patreons and it's you Patreons out there that help me continue to produce on this channel so thank you very much and please like subscribe and um, I think hopefully I'll be taking delivery of this on Friday uh, of course it's Tuesday here in Australia uh, and this video will be up by Wednesday so uh, I'm trying to do at least two videos a week now one midweek and uh, one for uh, the weekend. Not quite sure what uh, the project is going to be for this weekend. Probably a wood turning. I really want to have a go at uh, a piece of that giant sequoia that I have. So um, that'll probably be it. So thank you for joining me today and I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's bye for now.